Hi, everyone. I'm Tabitha Walter, Eagle Forum's political director. And I'm Kirsten Hassler, our executive director. Today, we are so happy to have on with us Georgia Eagle Forum president, Susie Boyles. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> yes, of course. So, Susie, your state is one of the leaders in the reopening movement across the country. What exactly is open in your state right now, and how have people responded? It, well, I'm going to start out with it's been a mixed bag how people have responded, and I'll come back to that. But our barbershops, you may think this is a strange assortment, but our barbershops, nail salons, um, and their corresponding schools are open. Um, restaurants are open as long as they follow strict guidelines. And I, I think our restaurants have been doing a great job all along offering curbside and, of course, delivery, yeah. uh, things like that. But now one woman was even creative enough in her restaurant to put shower curtains, clear shower curtains between the tables. Uh, and then they have strict sanitary guidelines to follow. They do not have to wear a mask. That is not mandatory in a business. However, uh, the other one that's kind of strange is our tattoo parlors have opened up. Um, <laughs> I won't be visiting there. <laughs> no. Then, no, I won't. <laughs> then um, the other thing that is our, our bowling alleys and some amusement parks have opened depending on they can maintain the six feet. Churches are beginning uh, to make their plans to open, and that's the exciting thing. Our church has been doing um, tele-services, you know, we've been yeah. doing them, um, mm -hmm. via, and it's actually worked out quite well, and it's, it, for me, it's been fun um, to kind of worship as a family. Mm -hmm. It's been hard on, on our church's staff, but there, our church is planning on opening, um, and they're thinking of creating creative ways to do that. For example, some people in the sanctuary, and then they'll live stream into our fellowship hall so that people can still maintain distances. It's be, And, of course, grocery stores and essential places have, have been open and have not ceased to be open. It sounds mm -hmm. like it's given people the opportunity to be really innovative and creative. And so that, that's one good thing to come out of this, you know. Well, another good thing that we've had, and, and I'll talk just more from a personal standpoint, I live in a cul-de-sac, and our cul-de-sac has always been very friendly to one another. I mean, we've raised our children together. We've married our children, not necessarily together, but, um, you know, we've, we've watched them grow up. Some of us have buried our parents together and been there for that. But the exciting thing through this is in the cul-de-sac, what we've been doing is either bringing somebody's movable fire pit out, and we'll stay in kind of our family clusters far enough apart from each other, but then we'll also bring dinner out. And our neighborhood, even though we've we've been congenial and have been somewhat close, I think this is going to continue. Everybody has liked the camaraderie from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, Susie, how are folks in Georgia handling the state opening up? Does it seem like there is continued fear to go about the day-to-day -day business as, quote, normal? Um, there's a little bit of both. There is elation that we can move around. However, there are some large metropolitan areas like the city of Atlanta that it is still on um, lockdown and we don't know how long. And to be very frank, what we're seeing is a difference in um, a difference in one's conception of personal responsibility and liberty. Mm -hmm. For example, I we've talked about this quite a bit with my peers when we were growing up. We still had diseases like mumps, measles. Um, it was a rarity um, because polio was pretty much gone by the time I was born. But we did have communicable viruses. But the difference was our mothers, our grandmothers taught us to always wash our hands. If someone was sick, um, then 
you know, that person stayed home rather than all the well people staying home and the mm-hmm. sick person <laughs> going around. I think that's been the difference. It's been um, those of us who have had that kind of growing up experience, we're glad to get out and still be cautious. I think that there is, quite frankly, a benefit between some people allowing their city to not just be cautious, but to be on mandatory lockdown. And that's not boding well with many people, particularly since the medical community has come out and said, this it is this is how it's communicated um, from person to person. And for us to be able to get out, I, I can tell you this, our, our streets are becoming far more populated than before. <laughs> yeah. People are getting out. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard to keep people in the warmer weather too. Well, and I think that's a good thing. And I think this has happened at a good time. Our governor has been very, very cautious, but also um, he recognizes there's a balance between people being wise with their own health care and also the economic impact that this is going to have. And one of the problems that we're seeing here in Georgia is many people who could go back to work who are either not in an area that's being uh, still asked to shelter in place. A municipality is what I'm, um, that type of area. But those people um, are finding that the roughly $900 a week that they are getting um, to stay home, you know, that's a nice thing for them, but it's mm-hmm. it's a budget cruncher. Yeah, it doesn't really provide much for them to, to live off of. Well, I think on that now, oh, you can go. What are you going to say? I was just going to say, um, it does, for many, provide a fairly good income. That's $3,600 um, fairly tax-free every month. However, it does not... Um, it does not encourage a person to get out and use their creative juices and, and be productive, Mm -hmm. which I think is also a healthy thing to do. Yeah, we definitely agree with that. I think on that note, uh, Congress is gearing up, especially in the house to pass another coronavirus supplemental here in the next few days. It's called the heroes act and house Democrats drafted this bill pretty much uh, partisan. It wasn't bipartisan at all. And it tops $3 trillion. Some of the provisions in this wish list include allowing illegal immigrants to receive direct stimulus payments. It provides up to $10,000 of blanket student loan forgiveness. It rewrites SNAP, which is a food assistance uh, policy, and it permanently, permanently disallows rulemaking to create work requirements and eligibility requirements for SNAP. Um, uh, On top of that, it adds funding for mail-in ballots and ballot harvesting, and it also gives bailouts to state and local governments, which will keep their economies in lockdown for even longer. Now, let me point out here that this is a messaging nightmare for Republicans. Some of the money allocated in this bill goes towards our first responders on the front lines. I mean, who doesn't want to oppose a bill that is called the Heroes Act. I mean, they are our heroes at this time, but the amount of spending in this bill will actually harm them and our entire nation in the long run. That's why we need you to contact your representatives to lend them your support for fighting it. They need to hear from you to say, to know that they can have the courage to, to oppose it and they can have the talking points to oppose it as well. Mm-hmm. We really urge you to head to our website, eagleforum.org, and send out our alert to your representative, again, asking them to not vote for Nancy's wish list. And with, Susie, with this in mind, how do you think Republicans should be responding to this? How can we get lawmakers to see that states like Georgia are doing okay despite opening too soon? Well, I looked at a map the other day, and it seems like it is very um, red and blue as to who wants to open and who does not want to open. But I I think even in states like California, I've spoken to my friends, and they, um, to see Los Angeles County 
wanting another three months to the end of summer for lockdown. I think mm -hmm. people are beginning to see this is about more than a virus. And I would say the best way for us to communicate this to people is if you only have $100 in your bank account, can you spend $200? And can you continually spend over that $100 that is in your bank account? What does that do to your well-being? What does that do to the economic well-being? I think some of the food shortages that we're starting um, to kind of hiccup in there with our farmers, I think we need to say we need to support our farmers. Mm -hmm. And by doing something like this, this is taking this is taking money away. And I think we need to point out how it would actually be detrimental to the first responder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, Susie, where can people in Georgia go to find more information on what you're doing? Um, the best place is to go to our website. And right now it is under construction, but it is you can you can still go there. It is um, Eagle Forum Georgia GA dot org. And um, anybody can always contact me via our uh, Susie at eagleforumga.org. Awesome. Um, and we'd love to talk to you anytime. Wonderful. And we'd love to put you on our newsletter to let you know what we're doing. Yes. Eagle Forum's <laughs> newsletters are the best, whether you sign up for um, Eagle Forum of Georgia's newsletter or for the national newsletter. We have an Eagle Forum report that is sent directly to your mailbox every month that has relevant information. Um, so you can go on eagleforum.org's website to sign up for that and to also receive alerts like the one we mentioned today to alert your representatives for or against bills that are coming down the pike very quickly. So thanks so much for joining us and we will be back next Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern live on Facebook. So see you thanks then. For Bye. Thanks for